Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the filing of a separate tax return when we have a consolidation. What is a consolidation? Consolidation is when we have a parent company and that parent company might own other subs, maybe one, two, three subs, it doesn't really matter. They might own them directly or indirectly. For financial accounting purposes, all these subs, they consolidate with the parent and they issue one financial statement. That's fine. However, when it comes to filing a tax return, well, there are certain rules whether these subs can file their own separate tax return or if they have to file or if they can file with the parent company. This is what we'll be discussing. Specifically, we're going to be discussing the separate tax return because we need to know what are the consequences or what are the benefits, what are the pros and what are the cons. Now, in the prior session, we discussed when to file a consolidated return. When can you file a consolidated return for that matter? Well, you have to own between 80 to 100%. The company that you own has to be domestic. So you have to own 80 to 100% of their stock, voting and non-voting, to have a consolidated tax return, or although you might own this percentage, the company might file separately. And this is what we'll be discussing today. Well, you can file, but you choose to file separately. Remember, if you own less than 80%, forget about, uh, forget about consolidation. You must file separately. If the corporation is a foreign subsidiary, if the corporation that you own is a foreign subsidiary, forget about consolidation. You, you must file separately. So consolidation applies to only, let's assume, a minority number of subs because you have to own 80 to 100% and they have to be domestic. So notice it's a... It's a very niche group, if you want to call it that. Now, why to file separate return? So why, if you have the option to file a consolidated or you may file separately, why do you file separately? This is what we're going to be discussing in this session. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So why file a separate return? Well, the affiliates are profitable. Remember, we have many subs, sub one, sub two, sub three. Okay, and we have the parent company that own all of those. Now, one reason to consolidate if this has earnings, this has losses, this has losses, what they would do, they will offset each other. This is one reason to consolidate if you can. Well, if all the affiliates are profitable, there is no motivation because you cannot offset the profit from one sub with the losses of another one because they're all profitable. So that eliminates the incentive for the subsidiary to consolidate, to file their tax return with the parent company and other subsidiaries as well. So you cannot use the losses to offset each other. Also, there might be few intra-entity transactions. What does that mean? It means those subs, sub one, sub two, sub three, they don't buy and sell from each other. They're not related. They're owned by the parent company, but they're not related. There's no inter-entity transaction. There is no incentive to consolidate to remove those inter-entity transaction. Now, also, there are benefits for filing a separate return. Well, your accounting choices. You, are, you have flexibility in accounting choices and flexibility more like, more importantly, with fiscal year selection. Because when you have a consolidated return, they all have to be basically follow the parent company. Now, if your business is seasonal and you would like to choose a fiscal year ending rather than calendar year, rather than January to December, well, if you file a separate return, you do have that option because you are filing a separate return. Now, bear in mind, you cannot switch back and forth between filing a separate return and be consolidated. Well, you have to decide what you want to do. You need IRS approval if, in case you need to change. What do we need to know about filing a separate return? There's immediate taxation on intra-entity intra profit. Well, what does that mean? It means when you pay taxes on that intra-entity profit, and we talked about this in the prior session, you create a deferred taxed asset. Because why? Because you paid for the taxes now, although the profit is intra-entity, but if you're filing a separate return, you have to pay it because you are 
in quote independent from the other party as far as taxes are concerned so when you when you pay your taxes it's considered prepayment prepayment of taxes and as a result you have a deferred tax asset so that's one thing we need to be aware of also now bear in mind if the parent company recognizes the profit for financial reporting purposes so if you have a parent company and they are rec recognizing the profit for gap purposes what do they have to do for gap purposes because they are recognizing the profit for now it create a future taxable liability because they have to do what in the future pay taxes on that one topic that that we have to be aware of is the fair taxes on undistributed earnings what is what is distributed earnings well distributed earnings is dividend so when the company makes earnings and they distribute the earnings that that's the equivalent word of dividend what happened if the company makes a profit which is the sub makes a profit the subsidiary makes a profit and they don't distribute this dividend simply put that is your earnings how do we have to deal with this well let's talk about dividend in general then we'll deal with this undistributed earnings or, or undistributed in quote dividend well we have to know under gap dividend are eliminated they represent inter entity cash transfer also the tax law state that if you own 80 percent or more of that company dividend are also removed from income through the dividend received deduction simply put if you own more than 80 percent of a company and obviously you're consolidating it doesn't matter there are no differences at that level because in both situation dividend is not reported if you own less than 80 percent of a subsidiary well tax recognition becomes necessary because if you own less than 80 percent any dividend you receive 35 percent of it is taxable and don't worry we'll work an example illustrating this concept and 65 percent of it is tax-free so you still get a dividend received deduction but not a 100 percent dividend received deduction the dividend received deduction goes down to 65 percent it's a different percentage and that sometimes changes but the point is you'll get some deduction now how about if the sub did not distribute 100 percent of its earning so you own shares in another company you own the majority you own 70 percent for consolidation purposes you own the whole thing now that subsidiary made a profit but they only distributed a part of the profit well what happened is they have undistributed profit undistributed earning what do we have to do with that undistributed earning well guess what income tax liability is immediately created for the recipient for the future potential recipient because the point is well this is your profit eventually it's going to be distributed once it's distributed it's going to create a tax liability therefore you have to be ready to book that income tax deferred income tax let's take a look at this example to illustrate this concept assume parent company owns 70 percent of the sub parents current earnings before taxes and investment is 400,000. the tax rate is 21 percent the sub current earnings 200,000 the sub paid 20 percent of the earnings so the sub's going to pay 20 percent of this this is before taken into account taxes and we have no intercompany profit or loss to keep it simple so what is the sub taxes well the sub earned 200,000 the tax rate is 21 percent they will pay in taxes 42,000 now of the earnings 200,000 they will deduct the taxes they will come up with net income or earnings after taxes well now you're going to pay the, div the dividend out of this amount so they pay forty thousand dollar in dividend which is uh, which will keep them with one hundred and eighteen thousand in distributed dividend or from a company perspective from a return retained earnings perspective now this forty thousand remember this forty thousand paid in dividend seventy percent of that goes to the parent so let's take a look now at the parent taxes the parent made a profit of forty four hundred thousand that's their current earnings then they received for seventy percent of forty thousand seventy percent of forty thousand is twenty eight thousand of this amount on this amount of this amount not on this amount of this amount 35 percent is taxable why because 65 percent is tax free why it's tax free because the government gives you something called the dividend received deduction because the parent company owns 70 percent 70 percent of the sub guess what you would receive this deduction therefore the remainder is 35 percent and 35 percent times twenty eight thousand should be nine thousand eight hundred so of the full amount of the forty thousand all what's left is nine thousand eight hundred that is taxable which is 
which will give us in total taxable income of 409800 now the parent company will have to pay taxes they will pay 21 percent and their tax bill for this year will be 86,000 86,000 let me see 86,058 dollars okay simply put if you want from a journal entry perspective debit income tax expense 86,058 credit income taxes payable 86058 now we have undistributed earnings from the sub and let, let's focus on this this amount here 118 now the of that 118 70 percent belongs to the parent 70 percent of that is 82,600 now if that income is distributed or if you assume it's distributed well it's going to be 82,600 going to the parent the parent will have to pay taxes on 35 percent of it assuming they keep their interest at 70 percent that's going to make 28,910 dollars of taxable dividend for the future anticipated well guess what based on 21 percent we're going to have a future tax bill of 6,071 dollars well guess what we call this a deferred deferred taxes payable now also what we have to do we have to debit income tax expense which is the same amount as this of six thousand and seventy one dollars and credit deferred taxes liability or deferred taxes payable of six six thousand seventy one dollars so let's do the journal entry combine those two journal entries we're going to credit income taxes payable eighty six thousand fifty eight for this amount here that we have to pay currently for the taxes we have a deferred taxes payable of 6041 and the combination of those two is 90 92191 and this is why i debited income tax expense 86058 i debited income tax expense 6071 and if we add them up 86058 plus 6071 they should equal to 92,129 of this amount this is the current portion which is what 82,600 and this is the the third portion and this is the journal entry that captures this example what should you do now go to farhat lectures and look at additional mcqs exercises explanation that's going to help you understand the different tax consequences in a consolidation scenario this important this ta this topic is important even on the cpa exam you may not have to go this far but you have to have a good understanding of this topic for your advanced accounting for sure you have to know this invest in your career invest in yourself visit farhat lectures good luck study hard and stay safe